More than a decade ago, ADK Action started working to increase awareness and protect habitats for monarch butterflies by distributing milkweed seeds, and then in 2016, creating the Adirondack Pollinator Project, teaming up with the Wild Center and Paul Smith College to promote hands-on conservation by encouraging community volunteers and homeowners to plant gardens for pollinators that include plants designed to provide a diversity of nectar and pollen sources for local bees, moths, hummingbirds, and butterflies, including monarchs. ADK Action has a mobile pollinator garden trailer that they take on the road to plant community-scale pollinator gardens across the Adirondacks. And joining us now is Sawyer Cressup, who is the executive director of ADK Action, based in Keysville, New York, a nonprofit working to preserve the natural beauty of the Adirondack Park, protect the pollinators, as we just heard, but also promote vibrant communities and help improve the quality of life for residents. Sawyer, welcome. It's so nice having you here with us today. Thank you for having me, Tom. Let's start with the Pollinator Project. Has it been a huge success for you folks? You know, I'm new to the ADK Action team, but by all aspects, it really seems like this project has truly taken off. Um, we have some fantastic partners that EDK Action has had the privilege of working with. Um, and, and this year we had our largest sale ever, our native pollinator plant sale. Uh, we had three days of getting over 4,000 native pollinator plants out into the community. And these are plants that are raised without absolutely any pesticides or insecticides, which means not only are they uh, native to this region, but they're also pollinator friendly. Um, if you use any kind of chemicals on, on plants like this, it, it really diminishes the habitat and uh, nutrition value for pollinators. Um, it can disrupt their nervous system. Um, many times they, they won't survive after landing upon them. But um, as we think about getting these plants into the ground, it, it might seem like you know one plant here, one plant there, but that's really where grassroots change comes from. And we've just been really pleased at uh, the sea change we've had across the Adirondacks, getting these plants into the soil and providing really stable, strong, and um, growing habitat. And so you sell the plants to individuals. They take them home, plant them. That's part of the idea. You also have the trailer, the pollinators we do. garden trailer and you'll go to various sites and help community organizations put in pollinator gardens you folks were kind enough to do that here in mountain lake pbs last summer and our pollinator garden is up and and running is there still a lot of interest in that are you still seeing a lot of people saying we would like to to host we uh, are pollinator garden we are, and we have almost 30 pollinator gardens out across the Adirondacks run by great stewards such as Mountain Lake PBS. Um, and it's an exciting way for us to um, share the stewardship ethic around these gardens and, and really see uh, even stronger, wider patches of habitat created. And also it's a way to uh, bring people together around education and, and the power of doing together with with pollinator plants. Um, and we've been working this summer to help reinvigorate the gardens that we've established, help train up the new folks who are involved with them um, and add some new plants to the mix. So we're excited not just for the new gardens, but for keeping that stewardship going. And was the installation of gardens put on hold during COVID? Are you getting back up to speed now and in increasing the number that you're, you're putting in this summer? We are, and I have to say, thankfully gardening is a social distancing friendly activity, particularly out outdoors and with the right safety precautions. So some of that was able to continue through the pandemic, but we're, we're really off and running now. Like your colleagues at the Wild Center, is it your hope that adding the monarch to the international endangered species list might motivate more people to take steps to help the butterflies and, and other threatened pollinators, uh, well, across the U.S., but also here in the Adirondacks? Definitely, it's, it's really a call to action and a wake up call because the International Union of Concerned Scientists, well, um, they listed it on on their list, their red list as endangered, it doesn't come with the same legislative set of protections that we would see if it was listed federally as an endangered species, although that may change in the next few years. Um, it just means there's plenty more work to do for people power to try to make change that we can. And um, while habitat um, varies across the paths that the monarchs take from our region farther north down to Mexico, um, 
the generations that fly from the Adirondacks down to, say, Texas, we really want to bring as many as we can to that kind of choke point, to that bottleneck. So while we may have milkweed all over the place here, we really need as much as we can to try to amp up that number that can get down south. And they're not on the endangered list here in the U.S. Well, you never want to see them put on that, that list, but if they are put on that endangered list, would that help in, in, in addressing the issue? Yeah, you're right that it's complicated. Um, rarely do we see species come off of the endangered list, which is its own challenge. But um, if they were to be listed federally here, we would see a lot of changes with what's regulated for habitat, particularly around roadsides, power line corridors. It would come with trade-offs and benefits and a lot more parties engaged. And, and we'd, we, we'd want to be there to support that work if that were to be the case. This is one of several projects you folks have backed. Uh, you work to limit pollution from road salt that's contaminated natural water supplies and families' wells. Uh, you've worked to expand internet access, especially for families who during COVID were learning at home, depending on broadband while they were at home learning. But for many families in more rural parts of the Adirondacks, the service simply isn't reliable. And for, and for some, it's, it's really not affordable. So you've been working to change that. Both the state and federal governments have been investing millions and millions of dollars into expanding broadband. Is that starting to pay off? Are you starting to see some success in getting broadband to more people here in the rural parts of the Adirondacks? We are starting to see some change and um, the pandemic really help draw attention to the fact that this is a bipartisan issue. And um, thankfully, we now have everybody at the table saying that this is a priority. It's not a nice to have. It's a have to have for, for communities here in the Adirondacks, particularly now that it touches every area of our life, from paying bills to educating our kids to, uh, to, to really everything we do. Um, I, I think we're seeing a lot of state and federal attention um, particularly with the monthly convenings that ADK Action has hosted for the past decade. And we're seeing a lot of opportunities for the North Country to be um, present in thinking about what's the best way to steward state and federal dollars um, to really make change here in the Adirondacks, thinking about um, end of the line and middle mile coverage. Early on during the pandemic, you helped get emergency food boxes to families who suddenly couldn't access meals at schools or get to grocery stores. You delivered tens of thousands of meals, especially in areas of the Adirondacks that are considered food deserts, where there just aren't grocery stores close by. Uh, the healthy food in the emergency boxes came from farms here in the Adirondacks, so uh, that helped those farmers as well. Uh, food from family farms is often more expensive than food that that you find at the grocery store, putting it out of reach for many families. But a new pilot program, ADK Action has launched this summer, is putting locally grown, fresh, nutritious food onto the tables of families. The Fair Food Program is providing families with a discount so that they can buy local food. How, how does this work and who qualifies for this? Sure, so I, I'm so glad you touched on emergency food packages because that's really the genesis of this effort. And even before that, thinking about where ADK Action first got their uh, feet wet with food security was with our pharmacy in Keysville, using an existing retail storefront as another means to provide access to whole ingredients and healthy food in, in a town where a supermarket had closed. And, and that led us to think really hard about urgent food security needs during the pandemic. And when the pace of that emergency slowed, we recognized the need was still there. We took everything great that was a part of emergency food packages and turned them into fresh food packages. So um, folks could use their um, SNAP EBT cards or even double up food incentives to purchase that box at uh, what would be a reduced cost, or they could uh, receive 30% off discount coupons to bring that increased price of locally grown food in line with what one might pay at a grocery store. We were able to work with incredibly supportive partners to then transition that pilot into something even more user friendly, which is a, um, a, a swipe card, just like you would use at the grocery store, a Visa card or a Snap card. We call these fair food cards, and all of this is part of our new fair food program. We've got I want to say 75 households with us now, and, and we hope to be able to continue this program, grow its reach, and scale it across the Adirondacks. A lot of people we want to be able to offer this service to, and it works at vendors where um, food that is veggies, produce, 
meat, uh, value-added goods like cheese, other forms of um, like maple syrup, yogurt, um, where that food is produced locally. Um, you know, it can't be used for things like gas or um, electronics. So it's specified to a certain range of vendors in a certain geographic region. For food. For food. And that's the whole idea is to get them good, healthy food to get that on the table. Yeah, exactly. Not just any calories, but whole nutritious calories from just down the road. And who qualifies? Here in the Adirondacks, we think about not just what the federal poverty rate is, but what that really looks like on the ground, what that looks like in communities with households that may be one emergency or two emergencies away from poverty. And we really wanna serve that larger group. We work based off of the United Way's ALICE threshold, mm -hmm. meaning asset limited, income constrained, but employed. And that does cover a lot of families in Clinton, Essex, Franklin, Hamilton counties where, mm -hmm. uh, yes, they're, they're employed, they're working, but they're struggling to get by and, and we've seen in, in those counties that uh, in some cases 30, 40 percent of the families fall into that category. It's true and as things get tougher, if things get more expensive, gas being the price that it is, you know, we see a lot of families who are struggling to put food on the table, let alone fresh healthy food. If folks are interested in signing up, can they still sign up for this year or is it done for this summer and you would be looking to bring people on maybe for next year? Yes, we are We are looking to bring on another cohort in the future, um, likely moving into 2023. You have another program that's expanded this summer, the Fair Share program, and we, you've expanded that this year? We have. We, we greatly expanded our Fair Share program, which um, it's an exciting way to get food at Community Shared Agriculture, CSAs. You know, getting a CSA is, is something that many people are not quite able to do because that's a big check to write up front. And thanks to the generosity of every single donor and supporter who helped fund our crowdsourcing campaign, uh, we were able to bring in over 100 families this year to receive CSAs from several different amazing farms in the Champlain Valley and here in Plattsburgh, Tangle Root Farm, Juniper Hill, uh, North Point Community Farm. Um, and we've just heard really wonderful feedback from participants. They look forward to getting their shares each week. They're excited to cook with the different foods they have. Um, and there is a difference when it comes from, from just across town. How do folks qualify for that? Same qualifications. We work based off the Alice system and, and we had a lot of different uh, interests from our website and from referral partners. And you touched on the pharmacy program. That started a few years ago. Is that program still continuing uh, this summer as well? They are, both pharmacies are going strong. What we've done in Keysville is try to approach this multi-dimensionally. Um, so we don't just have the pharmacy available, but we also have um, the Keysville Community Garden, which is just two doors down. Um, it's a public space, it's a learning lab, it's a place where anyone can come and harvest vegetables, but also learn how they're grown. Um, it doesn't operate quite like other community gardens where you divvy up plots, but really this is everybody's plot. It's a shared space. And that was just celebrated this past weekend. You have the yearly Keysville Art Festival. And not only is it for the artists to celebrate celebrate them, but at the same time it's also to celebrate the community garden. We did. It was a fantastic turnout this year for the Keysville Community Arts Festival. Uh, we had 150 pieces of art hung that were created just that week in Keysville. It's fresh local art, if you can believe that. Um, but not just art on the walls, but we had arts in the park too, which was new for this year. Um, we had over 100 different young people come and participate in arts activities from kids' plein air painting classes to zine making, tie-dyeing, face painting. And we were able to dedicate a mural that was created during last year's Arts Festival. It's called What Brings Us Together, and it's on the southern side of Adirondack Hardware, and it's just beautiful. And so it not only supports artists, uh, it also supports ADK Action. It's a fundraiser for you folks as well. It does. It does help support our community revitalization work. Sawyer Cressup, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tom. Great to be here.